what's up everybody welcome to today's stream uh, today's video and obviously here we have the angel Um, sorry, I got a message. Um, yeah, so as always, this, uh, this image or this stencil is uh, available for free. If you look down in the description of the video, um, you'll find a link to this image. You could download it, print it out, use it for free, do whatever you want to do. And here I am just gonna walk you through it. A quick little demonstration and show you guys how we take this uh, stencil image and really kind of create it into a, some art here. What's up James Melton? What's up Joe Wilkinson? How's it going, how's it going? Um, so all I've done is kind of our standard procedure for getting these ready is uh, I have a heavy cardstock paper and I have, I need to put a link to these uh, down below, but I bought these right here um, and they are nine by 12, 140 pound uh, paper. It's about 23 centimeters by 30 and a half centimeters. Um, and they're made for watercolors. Uh, but these right here is are kind of what I have found um, work the best and are, are really allow the best uh, amount of control over you know on the surface uh, while you're airbrushing so as we go on throughout the year uh, that's kind of what we'll be using for now um, so if you want to order yourself one of those I'll put a link down in the description of the video after I'm done today so if you want to check that out later if, or if you don't catch it live there'll be a just link down there I've gone ahead and used some spray adhesive and we've printed it out, use some spray adhesive to lay it onto our thick paper here. So we just, you know, took a, a regular piece of, you know, print paper and, you know, kind of used some spray adhesive to make ourselves a stencil. Simple, quick, easy, fast. A um, couple things we're going to be doing today. So I actually need to grab the colors we're going to be using today. Uh, but we're going to be using opaque illustration black and regular Createx transparent medium gray. Um, and let me grab those real quick so we get started. What's up, Stephen Ward? How's it going? How's it going? What's up, Joe? What's up, Dennis? How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another stream. Should be able to hear me okay, I think. That wire's not in the way? No, that's good. Cool. Just trying to keep everything out of my way. Um, so, yeah, we're going to use illustration. Uh, illustration opaque black. Uh, for the black, and then we're going to be using Createx, the regular line, transparent, medium gray for today. And we'll be using those two colors. And it doesn't hurt to help have a little bit of white if you want to come back with some white highlights, but uh, I don't believe it'll be necessary. Um, quick reminder, if you're kind of new or not as experienced with an airbrush, um, it helps to make the image bigger. So if you have a bigger paper, maybe like a poster board or a canvas, and you print this out bigger, it'll actually make it a lot easier on yourself. Um, I have done it here on this size because that's kind of where I, I want to work at. And as we go through the year, I kind of want to get more and more detailed and get you guys um, kind of used to working with a little bit more detail, more fine. Um, so before we start, kind of picking at any of this. We're gonna go ahead and mix up our colors. And I'm gonna mix up the black, about 80% reducer, 20% paint. 
Um, so we're going for a really fine mix today. And the reducer I'm using is again the Createx. See if I can get it there. The 4011 reducer. Um, and this stuff works really good. It's made for Createx and it's really gonna um, give you the best results. I, I see a lot of people just trying to use different stuff and there's no there's no point the createx reducer is already pretty cheap and it, it does what it's supposed to do like really really well which is kind of reduce the paint without diluting or, or killing off any of the color so uh, cool cool everybody getting along the chat nice so again just mixing up a little bit of black here and the reason we want to mix up the paint first is after you reduce, you do want to give it a few minutes um, before you start kind of spraying it because it'll actually, you know, help break up uh, the paint a little more and it'll allow the chemicals in the reducer and the, you know, paint to really mix up and give you a good flow. So make sure to just shake it up really good. Shake, shake, shake it. Shake it like your mama told you to. Um, and again, going on with this year, a lot of users have told me, or I have noticed over on the Discord, a lot of people are working with about two airbrushes to not, you know, between two to five. So most people have more than one airbrush. Um, so we're gonna start uh, incorporating more than one airbrush. So for the black, I have the Iwata HP um, CS here. And it's a little bit dirty, but don't don't worry, it's fine. I've just been using it. Um, and then for the gray, we're gonna use the Badger Sotar 2020. Um, this one I believe has a 0.3 millimeter needle, or 0.2. I don't I don't remember, but the Iwata has a 0.35, and that's what we're gonna be using again. We're gonna be reducing the transparent gray, but. Being that it's the transparent, I'm only gonna reduce it about 40% reducer to 60% paint. Um, so somewhere along those lines, a little bit more than half of paint to reducer. Um, as, as again, I said, it's already, it's already transparent paint, so we don't really have to reduce it as much to get a more dithered effect. Can make sure to shake it up really good. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And we'll be working with both the colors simultaneously. If you only have one airbrush, um, again, you could always just do it with one color, save your pieces, and then come back and reapply your pieces and do your colors as, as you need or see fit. I would recommend starting with the black, and you might not even need to um, reattach some of the pieces, maybe just using a curve, you know, like a good, a good curve set. Um, could help out a lot so um, along with today's exercise I do have the curve here this is the Mike's brush uh, flame kit which is actually just a curve set um, and again that's available down at the link at the bottom right hand of the screen here uh, if you're interested in one of those so anyway getting started here I'm just gonna finish shaking up this paint let that sit to the side for a sec while we get started pulling off some pieces so again as always we kind of want to start with the most back area and in this this circumstance it's pretty easy we just take off the back the background right most in most paintings that's what you're gonna end up doing is just taking off the background oh looks like I forgot to cut a piece here Attach that. I forgot to cut the arm here. There you go. So we take off the background. Make sure your arm stays attached. And we can cut in with the black. You're gonna just kind of get. We also took off a toe. I just noticed the toe is missing, man. Come on. There you go. 
Get that toe in there. Cool. It's all right. We got our curve set if we need to go back. I don't think we'll be needing the background again, but you always want to save it just in case. Um, you know, so that's up to you if you want to throw it aside or, or leave it. Um, what? Yeah, we have lots of stencil sets. So all I'm going to do around here is go around the outside with a nice black little quick little fade. Nothing crazy. It's black against white, so it's going to show. Uh, you could really do this exercise with any light and dark colors, but I just like using black and gray because it's going to get like a good old black and gray picture, you know. So just kind of extend the shadow and reinforce it along. Now here's where you kind of really want to decide what kind of background you want to use or what you want to do. You could add any kind of effects or anything around the back. Um, but for today, I think I'm just going to keep it quite simple. And I'm just going to kind of just add some little wispies. Maybe kind of like smoky, you know, a little bit. I'm just going to take it all the way out to the edge. And we're not really going for smoke. Um, we're just kind of using the smoke type of effect to bring it out. Maybe make it look like veins, you know, kind of. This is just, again, whatever you want to do in the background. I'm just kind of being creative with it right now. And we're just going to kind of make it look like a texture in the back. Maybe some rock. Something like that. So just get a nice random strokes. Like veins all in the background. And we're going to just give a little shadow line to our tape here. Bam. Force the shadow line. That's about all we'll do on the back, just to give it a nice little effect in the back. Nothing, nothing major, right? Now we can start with the the fun old process of peeling back. So we're gonna start off with the wing here. The wing has all these little bits, right? And we could go ahead and just take those off. So let me get you guys in there, so you can see. Um, so you see all these little bits, right? All these little, little bits right here. Um, we can go ahead and take all those off. And if you've done a good job of cutting them, they should just come off. Again, when you're spraying the spray adhesive, that's why I, I, I strongly say you use a light coat. You know, it just really takes a little bit to stick the paper on. You don't really need to apply it very heavy or anything. Taking off all them pieces. It's gonna take a little bit of time. But it's alright. We're not in a rush. And generally this, this whole beginning area is gonna be pretty simple. And as we progress forward, it's gonna get a little bit more a little bit more complicated. So we take all these off. Notice uh, right here. So down here at the bottom of the wing, we're gonna kind of leave that. All I want to do is I'll take all the, all the ones that are kind of off on their own. 
and they almost all have, kind of have a U shape. So that's that's the ones I'm going after right now, just so we can get those out of the way. All right. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if if you're a beginner, and uh, you know, or maybe you're just not as good or something, uh, making it bigger. Uh, will make it a lot easier because you don't have to be as precise with everything so what's up Jesus thank you thank you um, and we could actually just take all these um, on that wing off so just go ahead and take all of those because we're just gonna mark them in with black um, in order to give the wing the most fluffy effect we just want to kind of mark these in and then we're gonna come in with the gray and just a little bit of freehand and maybe even our little French curve set or a curve set and we could uh, you know, we could uh, kind of fluffing it up a little bit I guess that's the words I'm looking for How's everybody's day going? Everybody having a good day? You ordered a t-shirt, be here Saturday? Nice, man. Which t-shirt did you get? Did you get the OG Skull Squat shirt? I think I forgot to cut these right here. There's just so much to cut sometimes. And honestly, if it was doing this uh, like you know, as a project for myself, I would probably be cutting them as I go. It's just the insider <laughs> uh, secret there. I wouldn't have them all pre-cut. I would just kind of cut them as I go. And maybe even make different cuts depending on what I felt like it. But in order to teach you guys and in order to, in order to make a reproducible result so you guys could make the same design as me at home, um, it helps to have a pre-cut and everybody follow off the same design. again but if you're at home and and maybe you, you want to give it your own little flair I ain't gonna stop you by all means go ahead and make your extra cuts and do what you want to and as always if you want to tag tag me on social media on your post that's fine or if you want to join up on the discord um, that's actually the best way to go about it if you want my if you want my feedback What's up, Easy Airbrush? Yeah, Joe, those uh, those Skull Squat shirts. The only thing I would say is I hope you ordered a size just like a little a size bigger than what you're used to. Um, they don't shrink or anything. They actually it's held up really good, um, but they're just a little tight is all. But the fabric is like really soft and yeah, I'm actually I wasn't a fan of when I first ordered mine. But now that I've worn it and I've washed it and I've worn it and washed it and worn it and washed it, and now I'm actually, oh, that material is actually pretty good. It's held up. Uh, the print has held up. And so I hope you like your shirt. Of course, I say that as I'm wearing one of the Createx shirts. <laughs> but it, it's fine. Uh, the shirts are really nice. So thank you for that. Thank you for the support. And uh, yeah, I hope you like your shirt. So all I'm going to do is I take all those off, right? And I went all the way down with it, as you can see. Kind of just took off all the little pieces on the wing. And I'm just going to hit those in with black. All right, so I'm just going to a little bit. You don't have to be heavy with it either. Again, we're spraying black on white. So you just got to kind of, you know, give it one good pass and that's enough. You don't want to cake it on there. You don't want to sog the paper up. Nothing like that. Just one quick pass. And actually, if it's a little bit soft, that's quite okay because, like I said, these are feathers. These are some wings we're, we're painting in here. So... Right. 
And now here's here's where we start getting a little trickier, right? We've got all those kind of filled in. And here in this back area right here, right, right over her shoulder is where we have the most trickiest areas because we have spots that are kind of in the back and then they kind of move up in, in, in steps pretty quickly. So you need to order another one big, bigger. Yeah, yeah. My whole problem is that they fit great when I ordered them and then um, the holidays happened and my, I, ate, I ate too much food. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see here, I've pulled off this piece, right? That's kind of like a, a backwards F here. And then I'm going to go all the way down. We have this piece over here. That's, I, I guess this is kind of like the initial parts. But then we also have this one piece right here, right? So we're going to go ahead and take these off. And then we have this piece right here. We can take that off. And then we have this piece this little bitty piece right here right bam we could take that off and now we're just gonna hit those with black real quick again one good little pass nothing nothing crazy right now if you've cut this out correctly there's one more piece uh, sitting kind of right here and we can go ahead and pull that one off right there like that all right you see that and this is where the gray is going to come in we're going to go ahead and give it a little shake just before we spray the wife got mad because he didn't get one for her oh bro why are you leaving her out you know you know she got to be part of the skull squad son <laughs> so we're just going to hit that with the medium gray make sure you spray it off to the side and it's spraying good and again just one quick little coat and then you'll be able to tell the difference between the gray and black right away um, and when we peel off the final stencil, the gray the difference between the gray and the white will be noticeable as well. So that's kind of where we, we start laying in the gray. We have that piece there. Then you see this off to the left here. We have this piece. We can go ahead and peel that off. All right, and then again with the gray, we're gonna go on this left side right here. And we're just going to really close in just a little shadow coming off that black right there. Nothing crazy, just a little tiny shadow. Simple. And then we're going to move on to the back over here of the head, the hair. Right, like, like I said, there's there's kind of like a lot, a lot of little layers here. So we're going to take off all these little bits. on this first piece. There's these little itty bitty bits. So we get those off of there. Then we're gonna just hit those real quick with the black again, quick pass. Nothing crazy. All right. Then you see this piece right here. It's kind of right next to him. We're going to take that off. And again with the black, but we're only going to hit the left side of this. So only on the left side there. All right. So you're going to have like a white highlight on the end there real quick and then we're going to take off the back where those other pieces were inside of right simple and now we can come in with the gray and we're just going to kind of hit some strokes to kind of connect these pieces gray it in a little bit again it's it's kind of almost in the background so it's not really that that important but we're also going to hit this bottom lower edge just a little bit of black right there just to just to kind of throw it in the background there right so then we start moving we have 
in this piece right here. I'm gonna take that off. And this piece right here. We can take that off. Hit those in with black real quick. And like I've explained before, the reason we don't just go and take pieces off like all the way around is because we're trying to avoid getting overspray over those areas that are covered, right? So we're just trying to work nice and clean and keep it really nice and specific in the areas. So we kind of finished out the back to front on this on this uh, wings here and we've kind of worked our way into the hair, right? But from there, we're going to kind of switch off and we're going to come down here to her other knee. Um, again, this leg is kind of behind this other leg. So we're gonna do that one first. And we're gonna start off by removing these pieces here. <laughs> It'll be all right, been married 40 years. I hope so, man. But I also hope you get her her own shirt, so. <laughs> so we're just gonna take these off real quick. We're gonna come in with the gray. We're gonna gray those in. All right. Just gray them in. Then I'm gonna come in with the black. We're gonna hit a shadow off of that bottom there. All right, nothing too crazy or fancy yet. Um, before we go any further, we're gonna take off this little piece that's right here between the, hand, the arm, the hand, and the knee. There's a little triangle, and we can go ahead and take that off, hit that in with some black. Then we can take off the knee here, this whole piece. All right, and that's gonna kinda give you your first taste of the fabric. And all we wanna do is come in with the black, hit this top edge just one time and then reinforce the bottom shadow all the way across. Right. Boom. And uh, here's where your, your curve set kind of starts coming in and your gray. So using these, these uh, lines that are already there, right? You kind of align your curve set and just kind of extend off their shadows a little bit. Right, it's kind of already pointing you in the direction. You just kind of have to follow and align your curve set where you see fit. Bam. All right, so that we got our first little piece of fabric in. Then we could go ahead and move down over here on this side. So we're gonna start with the fabric over on the other side of the shirt. And starting with this back piece here. And this piece big piece here All right, so these are kind of the biggest in the back pieces there and we're just gonna take a little bit of black and again we're just gonna kind of hit those in again you don't have to be heavy with the black just do a nice little light coat Simple, quick. And then we start with this bottom piece here. Take that off. And all we're gonna do is hit this left edge with the black. Like this. All right, that whole edge. Then we're gonna take off this other piece here. You guys can see that, yeah, you guys can see that. Take that piece there. Then we're gonna come in with the gray. And we're gonna finish shading in that one on the bottom, as well as shade in that one on the top. Make sure to kind of reinforce the shadow around the arm 
and even if you want to take some black and kind of darken it in, I'm just going to use the gray to kind of make it dark. I'm going to go over it a couple times and make us a nice dark gray right there. Bam! And then we can remove, you see this little, this little like a teardrop there, and then this, and then this. Fill those in with gray. And then we can move down here. So just moving around, getting all the tones in. So we're gonna start kinda in the back over here. See this piece? We're gonna take this. And we're going to use the black to just kind of come off the right. And then we're going to go up this bottom just a little bit. Not too much. Then we're going to fill in the rest with gray. Right, you can see we're having two airbrushes is really helpful here. Because we could just switch off colors, uh, no problem. So again, we're going to take off this big next piece. And this little piece here, we go ahead and remove those. And we're gonna again, just go off the black off the bottom. Just a little bit. And then fill in the rest with gray. And actually, if you wanna kinda shade it up with gray, that's perfectly fine. And shade in that little spot. <clears throat> Simple. Then we're gonna move this piece. It's just piece by piece. And if you do it correctly, you'll end up with a nice piece of artwork. And now here on this one, we're gonna go off this left side and bring it over to the right. And we just want a nice, nice shadow going this way. sideways here to the left we have these pieces that kind of run all along the bottom side here you guys can see that all right. these pieces that run all along the side of the bottom now those we're just gonna fill in with black little pass of black simple then we're gonna remove this piece here and again we're just gonna do a little bit of black off the bottom right here just a little bit and then we're gonna bring gray all the way up right. same thing on the next piece we're gonna take it all the way off but this one we're gonna hit it all the way sideways with black and then we're gonna bring the gradient up right, just a little bit and as you can see we're kind of taking the light because the light you know is kind of coming this way so as these wrinkles kind of go sideways we want the light to kind of you know it's gonna be at the bottom so that's why we're switching positions on the shading here. Um, same as with this piece here. This, what is this? It looks like a little bird. I'm gonna take this and we're gonna hit the top side and around here. And kind of bring it nice and dark all the way down. You don't wanna darken it all the way. You just kind of wanna bring it nice and dark all the way down. We don't want it fully black. You still want to leave that white 
kind of show through at the bottom there. See that? Moving sideways, take off the next piece, and actually you can take off the next few pieces here as we kind of finish this up. So, actually no, just take off these two pieces. Two pieces is all. And we're just gonna hit those in with gray. Then we could take off this last piece here. And then we're just gonna hit with black across the top of it. Right, we're gonna bring it around. We're gonna make sure to darken up right there on top of that foot and kind of bring it out from there. Fill the rest in with gray all the way down and because we're using transparent gray uh, you won't really cover the black with this gray it's just going to kind of give you a nice gradient all the way up to the black um, so then here we have this part on the toes we're all the way over here on the toes and we're just going to start off with the farthermost left toe here and we're just going to take a little bit of black and hit the bottom Hit the bottom of the toe, and then we're going to use gray to hit the edge. Right. So do that to the next one as well. Take off the toe. We're just going to take a little bit of black. We're going to hit the bottom right there. Then we're going to take some gray and just you know, extend the edge in the shadow there to give you the, the nice tone. Make sure you use the edge because that's really what's going to give you the shape, right? So make sure you use the edge to bring your black in right here. And then make sure you use the gray to extend that edge all the way up. Fill in that toe. Last but not least, we got this one here. And we can go ahead and again just kind of do the black shadow at the bottom. Do a little bit of gray. And then we can remove the last toe here. And all we want to do on this last toe is at this bottom right here is we want to bring, see how I just folded it over? And off of the bottom, we're just going to bring a shadow coming in. So all we want to do is really mark it so that when we remove this foot, we have the base of the toe marked off. So that's what we're going to do next is just remove the foot, all right? All we want to do is use that spot where we marked the toe off right there and use that as a guide for our shading line to come in. We're going to shade in the bottom of the foot here and we're going to wrap it around up to the top. We are kind of want to blend in this hard shadow at the end here and we're going to want to darken it out. All right, so it kind of looks like the foot is fading into the into the robe here and then on the top we're going to bring the black shadow just down a little bit off the top and then we're going to bring in the gray all along the side and we're going to connect it to our toe here and again if you make it bigger you could obviously add more details and more stuff in there if I really wanted to come in here and just kind of start detailing in the toes, which I might do some when once we actually get more of the design in. So, you know, do the base of the foot and all that good jazz. So there you go. We got all that in there. And then there's one piece left right here. We can go ahead and take that off. We're just going to hit black on this left edge and then bring the gray up 
to this side over here. Boom. Boom. And then we get to start on her face up here. All right, I need to remember to move the camera more often, for sure. All right. Just trying to get it get it centered properly backwards is hard all right there you go cool so we're moving on to her face here and first thing we want to remove is her eyes right so he, she I actually on the drawing there's two slits for her eyes like they are marked off and then you should cut them and you should cut them right there's two of them one there one there Get those off. There's also nostrils. So there's one nostril and the other nostril. And we can go ahead and take those off. As well as the lips, there's like kind of the center portion of the lips here. It's just really gonna give us the most impression. We can take all those off and we're just gonna kind of hit those in real quick with some black. sure we got those in there real good the reason you want to do those first is in case you miss any of these other pieces or something at least you'll have the, the eyes and the mouth marked off so you'll know where those go then we're gonna start off with the neck All right we're gonna take the neck off and we're just gonna go on this left side right here on the hand now we're gonna do a nice little shadow here and then we're gonna fill it in with the rest with gray. And that finger just will not stay in place. <laughs> that finger's giving me the finger. <laughs> um, do you have a reference pick I go off? So I kind of used the picture of a statue for this, but all in reality, all I'm doing is kind of um, going off my head here for the shading. Um, and it's really what I would recommend you go to is, is just kind of use your head as to where you think the shadows and stuff are going to be applied. Um, and doing these exercises should help you kind of comprehend that as time goes on. But what I'm going to do next is you see these pieces I've taken off is just kind of hit those in with black. All right, and actually there's a lot of pieces here on the head but only a few get black. Uh, so we're gonna do that one, those two in black, and we're gonna remove that one and remove this one. Um, but on this, on these, I'm only gonna come off black off the top here and kind of go around. And then I'm gonna fill them in with gray. Um, main reason being is again, we're we're starting to move towards the top, so a lot of stuff is going to be a little bit lighter. And not everything has to be as heavy, you know. So that's kind of what we're going for. And we're going to take this piece of the neck off. We can fill that in with gray as well as this initial piece right here. That could go gray as well. <clears throat> So we're just taking all our time, just doing these piece by piece. And now we could go this piece of the hair. And you gotta be careful with the hair because there's so many pieces that you wanna be make sure you get the right one. So you see like this next piece on the hair right here in the front is right next to the piece that we just painted. So <clears throat> as you're painting, you might get a little bit confused but never fear because you could always go back and fix it, right? So I'm just trying to get this piece off right here on this side. Take that whole piece off of there. So all we're gonna do is hit that whole edge with some gray. Right there. Hit that edge with some gray, hit that one. Bring it all the way down here with some gray. 
<clears throat> and then we can move on to this little snake looking one. Or actually, no, wait, let's just finish off this side. Just to keep it easy, let's finish off this side here, take off these last three pieces. And we're just gonna gray those in. Just a little bit of gray. On those three pieces. Bam. And then we can remove the pieces on this side. See, the whole thing is that this is layered um, the way I've designed it. So that you could do these pieces, then you're going to remove a whole separate section and shade that whole thing in. So we're going to do those all with gray right there. And as you can notice, I'm doing those at a time, and then I'm moving on. I'm not doing all of them at once, because then you might end up losing your lines. And that, that wouldn't be good. So again, we're just taking this off and this off and this piece off. Here you go. That That's where I was at. Now we get to fill those in with gray. Fill it in. Fill in this piece right here. And now, now we can remove this snake looking one goes all the way up right there it comes all the way kind of down right here and all we're gonna do is just kind of hit a nice little shadow all along in there and shade that all in all around good and then there is this piece right here you can remove throw a little bit of gray on that then use your edges, and I believe that's it for the hair. I think we could take off the rest of the hair here. All right. See, so you're gonna have the hair, right? You see, you have the hair here. Zoom out, you'll have the front wing, and then this right here. This is part of the back wing, right? So the other wing on the other side, right? So we have all the hair in there, and all those bits. We have the back wing over here, and then we're gonna have the front wing once we uncover it right over here. Um, but we can, we could go ahead and peel all this back. I believe everything up to there but you see here on the shoulder since we have it exposed I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little bit of black and we're gonna have hit that shoulder just around one time Bam. cool so we're gonna move here to her shirt again just giving the face a little bit of a rest gonna move here to her shirt we're gonna start off with some black and probably our curve set here. And we're just gonna bring some wrinkles kind of coming up. Just use some nice soft lines to bring some shades up. And we're probably just one good wrinkles enough. Hit that left edge. Bam. Then we're gonna bring our gray and we're gonna shade up that black as well as bring it around that right edge right there. Boom. Boom. Now there's three little pieces in here in the hand. See this piece right here, this piece right there, and that piece right there. Can you guys see that? See those three little pieces on the hand right here. One, two, three take those off we're gonna lay black right in there nice and easy now our finger that didn't want to stay down right we can go ahead and peel it back and take it off even if you want to and we're just gonna come in really lightly with some gray and this is again right if you're working with something bigger it's a lot easier and we're just gonna kind of shade it in going this way 
Bam. Then we're gonna hit the next finger. Alright, we can peel it all the way back. And we're gonna add the shadows for the finger. Bam. And if you notice, I'm using that left edge, kind of sticking to the left edge to kind of really get that nice little shadow in there of the finger. Go to the next finger. Boom. Bam. <clears throat> now that last finger, we're actually going to move down to here to the palm. So we're going to lift the palm up. Leave the finger down. And we're going to bring a little shadow right off of that finger going down. Bam. Then we can take off the rest of that hand. And probably using a little, little curve here. Just connect those two pieces and we're going to give it a little shadow going off to the left here. Can you guys see that? Oh, let, me, let me make sure you guys can see here on the arm. So I'm using the, the curve set to give me a good edge from here to there. And then I'm just going to kind of bring it down off her wrist. A nice little shadow and I'm going to attach it to this curve here. Boom. And then if you want to get detail in her wrists. Give her finger some shading there. Bam. jumping around on her skin right now we're gonna go back over here underneath her armpit we're gonna peel back the armpit we're just gonna take a little bit of black and we're gonna hit that shadow coming up that's it and then we're gonna use a little bit of gray to reinforce that black right there and then I believe we could take off her arm. Right now the whole other arm can come off. We're gonna extend the shadow there. And then we're gonna come around the shoulder, right going up. And then we're gonna come down here. And coming off of her knee right here, we're gonna bring a shadow going up to the left and one going up to the right. And it's gonna quickly give you the impression that it's round, right? So that's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to fill it in. We're just kind of give it a nice shadow on both sides. Right? And then we're going to give it a smaller shadow on the other side, just to again, reinforce the roundness. Bring in some shadows for the hand that is over the other hand. So if you want to shade that in, and in general, just detail out your, your other arm here. Bam. Bam, son. So there we go. We got all of that in there. And I believe we can pull off. Yep, we can pull off all of this. We can pull off all the wing. We can pull off all her dress. I believe we've got all of that in there. So assuming you've got it all in there, we can go ahead and take all that off and we should have our good base for all our design here, except the face, which we are about to get to, but without a good initial design, I can see a lot of you not even wanting to continue. So. It helps to uncover it, see it. And uh, the only piece I kind of forgot is kind of, we're going to put this piece 
Try to fit it back into place there. There you go. And we're gonna come in with a black right off the edge right there. Just back towards the wing. We see we had already done it up here, but we forgot to kind of bring it out here. So before you peel that off, make sure you kind of hit that black. There you go. Now the wing's in the back. Cool, we got all those off of there, all that done. And we got our angel looking pretty good. As you can see on, on the screen on that side. <laughs> um, so yeah, there we go. We get, get rid of all that. And you have all your bases here for all your design. Now we're gonna move back onto the face. So first off, there's these two things around the eyes. So like these circles, right? We go ahead and leave on the right eye, we could leave the actual center part here. And on this left eye, we have this, we have that piece and we have this piece here. Let me see if I'm actually, yeah, there you go. See the eyes, we, one kind of has this, this raccoon eye and one kind of has this, just these, this piece and that piece. And that's all we want to peel off. And we're just gonna come in with some gray. We're gonna kind of gray them in. Just real quick, not, not heavy or nothing. And then on this left eye, we're gonna hit the right side. Boom. And on the right eye, we're gonna hit the left side. Boom, so like towards the center of the face, basically. You just wanna give it a nice dark, dark shadow there. Bam. Then here under the nose, there's this piece right here. We can go ahead and remove that little tiny piece under the nose. We're gonna go ahead and fill that in with a nice gray. We're gonna try to get it as dark as we can gray. Just a nice gray all the way in there. Remember we marked off the nostrils, so the nostrils should show up black once we remove or once we move forward. So all I'm gonna do is remove this nose piece here. All right, we can remove that nose. And again, coming up close to that left side there, or on it, I'm just gonna come in with a nice little shadow right there. Bam. Then we're gonna remove the left side of the face. We're gonna pick it all up. Actually, wait, there's this, we forgot to blacken in that piece underneath. Under the lips, there's a little piece. Make sure you get that piece blacked in before you move forward. And then we're gonna lift up the left side of the face from the bottom here. And the whole left side of the face, um, yeah, including the lips, should come up here, just like that. You could just fold it over up there. The lip and everything should come off here. Right again, and so you wanna use your imagination a little bit, but you, you know the shadow is gonna be coming off, off of the right hand side going to the left, right? So all we're gonna do is kinda of use Again, what's already there and the edge here to bring some gray off onto the left. So the left side of the stencil going toward the left side of the face. And so all we want to do is just use those edges. Then we can pull off the rest of the face and the rest of that. There you go. We have our good bases in. Oh, one, one last thing to remove is the other eye. Almost forgot. I'll go ahead and remove that eye. And we should have no more stencils left. Now all we want to do is bring in a little gray right off the top of that eyelid on this side. Same thing on the other side. Nice little U. Kind of extend the shadow there. 
And basically now we're playing the soften game, right? So we have all these hard edges and we kind of want to play the soften game where we want to we want some of those hard edges, but some of them we just don't want them as hard. Yeah. So you play a little bit of softening, you just kind of go in there, shade them off a little bit. Maybe give the face some more shape. You know, you could bring in a shadow coming on off of this side. General, here's where you start kind of using your own freehand skill, your imagination. Oh, there's also this piece of the cheek I almost forgot. Staring right at it. Make sure you remove this piece of the cheek there. There you go. You got your nice bright spot on the cheek. You got your nose. And then you can use your French curve set. All right, so I'm probably gonna take this little tiny one that I have here uh, to start kind of layering in. So here on the head, here on the face, you know, it just helps to have some edge to really bring in some of those shadows. And if you feel like you need to bring some of those pieces back in, feel free to do so. Uh, so from there we kind of got the face pretty good and we're just going to kind of go back to the robe so again just using the lines that are already there and the gray we're just going to kind of use what's there and follow it going up and if you want to use some freehand some freehand always 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 looks good Like always, this is your own personal little bit of freestyle area right here where you get a little bit of uh, leeway. And uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to go wrong here because we've already laid out the foundation. Like I said, all you gotta do is, if the stroke is going that way, you kinda gotta just lay a uh, shading kinda going that way, you know? And just line up a French curve where, where you feel it needs it. And just drop in a nice little shadow there. But if you want to use my example, that, that's quite okay as well. So all I'm doing is just, these are just kind of folds in the fabric. Cool, so we got all that in there. Then we got the wings. All right, so we got all that fabric in there. Now we got these wings up here. And uh, <sighs> no easy way to put this to you, but you're gonna have to kind of work at it uh, one of two ways. You got freehand, right? You could just kind of go in there um, and if you want to start with gray, I would recommend you start with gray and you could just kind of come in here and again, the, the, the guidelines are already set up for you. You just kind of got to extend them and connect them, right? And I like doing freehand because it makes it look like fluffy. It makes it look random and it gives everybody a chance to get their own little, you know, flare in there. The second way would be to get a, a you know, a really nice French curve set. And just kind of anywhere you see where, you know, there's a little, little dip or a little feather, you know, there. Just kind of bring in your French curve and, and give it a little bit of a shadow. Um, you got to be careful of this too, because you could build up. You see, like it's building up paint there on the edge, so you got to make sure to clean it off um, and then keep going. So 
it always helps to have a rag or a paper towel so you can just wipe it off real quick and keep going right so you have that option you could go that route or you could go you know just freehand and in, it's honestly okay if it's a little bit random and if it's a little bit you know unruly because that's that's honestly what's going to make it look more feathery than if they're all straight edged you know and we're just going to kind of go in with the gray really quick and if you see this line coming down here um, that's kind of where I'm going to lay a nice little shadow coming all the way down over everything um, and then I'm going to come back in with the black and kind of fluff it up even more Right, but I just want to give everything a nice shadowy tone and while I have the gray I'm just going to extend the feathers here give everything a nice gray kind of shadow and if you lay a nice nice amount of gray and especially a nice transparent gray like this and you lay some opaque white um, you know highlights then they really it really makes them bring them out because you have the white sitting on the gray and not just you know over an, another bright color <clears throat> so switching off to the black and I'm just gonna go in here again with some nice little freehand you don't have to be all precise with it or nothing like that you just kind of want to get the feathers in there so Now, if you're doing this really big, like say if you've got a really big canvas and you decide to do this, obviously you're going to want to lay more detail into every feather and maybe, you know, do a lot more work into it. But at this size, um, you know, unless you plan to be looking at it under a microscope or something, you're really not going to tell the difference. Um, doesn't hurt to put more detail I'm always gonna push for more detail especially if you can do it do as much detail as you can but also you know at this size if you can't get the detail in there don't don't worry too much as you know it's something that comes with time Cool. So again, now that we have the black in here, if you want to reinforce any of kind of your your design, uh, now would be the time. And probably can zoom you out here. Whoa, it's really zoomed out. Yeah, but now we have a nice, nice design here, kind of laid out for us. And if you want to come in, you know, with your French curve here, maybe you want to give a nice dark shadow right here for the hair there. Maybe you want to give in some nice details to the hair. But uh, the whole idea here is that it's kind of a stone figure, so we can't give it too much detail um, as stone figures really don't have it like that. So it's okay if your figure kind of lacks some of the detail that you would expect to see in a person or, or in real life because that's not what we're going for. Again, just add a little bit of shading, extending what we already did.
Ну. Cool, so once you're done, are you satisfied with your figure, you know? We still have this bottom piece here. She's sitting like on a wall here. And we can use the same piece that we just took off. And we're just gonna stick it a little bit down. Right, so we're just gonna move it down. <laughs> like maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch. You know, you could decide appropriately how your ledge wants to look, but we're just gonna hit that edge with a nice black. Bam. Maybe adding some some cracks or defects in the in the wall here. Bam. Then we're gonna flip it around. Right? We're flipping it's not the best way because this is not this is not perfectly straight, so maybe we'll just go down just but only a little bit less, maybe half of what the top is. Gonna shade that in. Bam. Then we can go ahead and just bring in our main wall here. And if you want to add it a, a brick wall effect, you know, if you want to add the stripes or whatever, that's more than fine. But really, you know, here you can get it again. I want you guys to get creative. You want to make a brick wall, maybe you want to make it sitting on something. Show me what you decided to put right here. Cool. So again, if you wanted to go back with white, um, you know, you could always go back with white, add some white highlights, maybe add some more detail, this and that. You know, again, this is about the size of my hand. So, <laughs> you know, I could go in there and really get it all nice and detailed, but I think for as far as the demonstration for you guys, um, this is a pretty good, pretty good layout and you guys could from here add in your own your own details and you know whatever it is that you like to see but yeah as always uh if you like these videos want to see more like this consider joining the skull squad clicking that join button and uh, grants you access to lots of cool stuff including the live chat that everybody has been enjoying here um as well as a few perks uh go ahead and click that join button you could get yourself all informed on that it helps bring more videos like this as always shout out to create text for providing the paint for today's videos shout out to all the members of the skull squad again you guys make all these videos possible um, so it allows me to divert time to doing this um, for you guys and kind of showing you guys the ropes um, and yeah as always if you want to show me this uh, down below in the description there will also be a link to the discord and you could go and you know post it up on the discord it's more private you know you're not you're not gonna have everybody seeing your stuff it's kind of just for us um, but if you don't mind sharing your stuff on social media if you don't care who sees it please go ahead and tag us we'd like to see your results and yeah as always thank you guys for watching make sure you click that like button if you like this video and we'll see you guys in the next one thank you joe wilkinson with the two dollar donation Thank you, thank you, sir. You make these videos possible with every bit that you give. Oh my gosh. And yeah, with all that being said, I'll let you guys have a rest of your night. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, we look forward to seeing you guys over on the Discord again, like I said. 
if you need airbrush supplies or any of that using the links down below also helps the channel so if you just you know you're like i only have money for my supplies well maybe if you order your supplies using our links um you know you could also get your supplies and help the channel out so again thank you guys for all the support we'll see you guys in the next video have a good one and good luck everybody